what do you think is the best 401k broker? My solo 401k is with Schwab and I've been with them for two years now. Uh, Schwab is really good. Um, I'm going to, uh, I've been with Schwab, Fidelity, Vanguard, um, and a couple of others, but Schwab is giving me the option to do Roth. Uh, which, which is something I like. And the other one is that I can call them at any time and they'll answer my, you know, answer my call. So that's really important too. Um, how I do my solo 401k is not necessarily the same, right? Cause I, I'm a business owner, so I can pick my 401k as a business owner out there. I, you know, I talk to Schwab, Fidelity, Vanguard to see which 401k has the lowest expense ratio or the management fee. If you're not self-employed, uh, you don't really have a choice but to use the one that your employer provides. So your, if your employer has a contract with Vanguard to give their employees Vanguard 401k accounts, that's who you're gonna have to go with. I like Vanguard. I used them for about five years when I was employed back in 2017 to 2021. Vanguard has really awesome options and their index funds are historically uh, just cheap and really, you know, they come with good track records. Um, they, the downside of Vanguard is that they have poor customer service. That's the reason why I left them. So when I left my job, I actually just rolled over my 401k from Vanguard to Schwab 401k. And it just, you know, worked out pretty well. I had no problems with, you know, investments. I thought the backdoor Roth IRA strategy or not strategy, the, uh, the process is really simple to do with Vanguard. It, it's just, um, customer service was really poor. I had to wait one time, like wait about three hours to get on the phone with somebody. And that was just unacceptable to me, especially with, you know, I'm trying to move some money around. I wasn't trying to trade stocks or anything, but I was just trying to move my mega back to a Roth from a 401k to Roth IRA. Being on the phone for, you know, waiting on the phone for three hours just wasn't acceptable to me because I didn't want to wait another day and potentially, you know, have tax liability if I left that money in the 401k. But, you know, you, you can check out my video about the, the mega back to a Roth process if you want to. Um, and before TD Ameritrade, they merged with uh, Schwab. I thought TD Ameritrade was really awesome. Let me see if I can find the TD Ameritrade. Yeah, TD Ameritrade doesn't exist anymore. So TD Ameritrade was really good too. It's too bad that they're gone now. Fidelity is pretty good. My wife has her Roth IRA with Fidelity. Same index funds. I believe she has like a S&P 500 index fund. I can't remember. The downside of Fidelity is the app that, that just came out. Uh, it looks kind of weird to me. It's not as user-friendly in my opinion, that's just my opinion. But when it comes to Roth IRA, okay. Uh, here's another downside of Fidelity. If you do the backdoor Roth IRA, is that if, you, if you're doing a backdoor Roth IRA because your income limit is above the, uh, the Roth IRA income limits, it does take days for the money to go from traditional IRA to settle in traditional IRA and then move it to Roth IRA. I think it takes like five business days, which I think is, too long and then once it settles in Roth IRA then you can buy mutual funds you know index funds ETFs whatever but that process that extra five days it it is a headache I don't know why Fidelity does it Vanguard didn't have that waiting process waiting time and Schwab doesn't have that either so you know that's something to keep in mind and the other one that you might want to look into is like the frequency of trading and frequency of automatic investing i am all about like just riding the train right and just keep it as simple as possible so using schwab and i'm not endorsed by schwab at all i've just been using schwab for a long time i want to buy stocks or buy index funds every friday let's just say and i looked at schwab and it gave me the option to you know buy buy shares buy mutual funds every friday i don't think fidelity gave me that option I don't know if they do now. Let me know in the comment section down below if I'm wrong about that. But at the time when I was applying for a solo 401k, it just did not allow me to do it. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to go with Schwab. So those are some of the criteria that I needed is to, you know, I want a dollar cost average the best I can, but I can't do that if you place too many restrictions, right? By the way, I am so fired up to announce the launch of my private buyer community for people just like you and me who are passionate about investing, saving, and achieving financial independence and exploring different possibilities to retire early. 
my private community will allow you to connect with me on the platform and get in touch with other like-minded individuals or couples who are just as serious as you are with the FIRE movement. As a member of my private community, you'll get resources like investing, saving, paying off debt, or finding the right place to grow your money. For a very limited time, please enjoy the free trial by clicking the link in the description below. Just real quick too, I, I do wanna show you what a solo 401k does, okay? So if you're a business owner, it, you can contribute the same thing up to $23,000 as, as an employee. Okay. So I, I wear two hats, right? I am an employee of my own company and I am also an employer of my own company. So if you're a sole business owner, uh, you don't have any joint partnership or anything like that. You can do this. So you can open up a, what's called solo 401k. Okay. And then for the remaining $46,000, I can contribute as an employer. So what that means is that I am going to personally, I'm going to get paid by my company and I am going to contribute as an employee. And I, as the employer of my business, I can contribute up to $46,000 to my solo 401k. All right. Now, what does that mean in terms of net income? So the maximum you can do is actually 46,000 divided by 25%. So the maximum that you can actually contribute, if you look at the IRS website, is the 25% of your net income. So in this case, if you did 46,000 divided by 25%, the maximum net income is 184,000. Sorry, that was too small. Let me go and zoom in on that. So $184,000 in net income will allow me to contribute $46,000 as an employer. So if I earn less than that, okay, so let's say, my net income for my business was 20,000. Then the maximum that I can contribute as an employer is 25% of that, right? So 25, right? Then that would be $5,000. That is the maximum that I can, I could contribute as an employer to my solo 401k. And as an employee, obviously, I need to make at least $23,000 as an employee. And I can put that in Roth or traditional. And Schwab actually gives me the option to do either traditional or Roth for employer contribution. So check with your employer and see if they allow you to do Roth contributions for the employer contributions, which means that you're going to have to pay more taxes now. But I can do this as an employer for the solo 401k and contribute in Roth dollars for the employer contribution. So it's pretty sweet. But take a look, you know, see where you are but really good question. I think personally, I think Schwab kind of comes out on top because of that, but nothing wrong with Fidelity either. Vanguard could have been better, just their customer service, that's it. I don't mind their website interface. I think they still have some work to do, but a couple of things they, they need to work on, you know, custom service especially, but great question. Mm -hmm.